Hello, everyone, and welcome to Park Pro's coverage of the Tournament Capital Open, brought to you by Dynamic Disc. This coverage is brought to you by Okanagan Disc Supply. We are Park Pro. I'm Jesse. No, I'm, I'm a- Jesse. I'm Andre. This is Jesse. Hi. <laughs> Jesse, what do we have uh, going on in the front nine there? Yeah, we saw a great battle. Casey Hannemeyer currently leading the group with his seven down. Chasing him by one is Thomas Gilbert, but leading him by six in the tournament. It is a t- tight race behind Casey with Andrew, Stu, and Duncan tight on his heels. Yeah, Stu carded the eagle on hole nine to get him back into the mix with Andrew. We'll see if he can take advantage of that on the back nine. We're on hole 10 here. This is a 290 foot tunnel shot, par three. I don't know what else to say about this. Just lace it straight through there and try not to hit any of the trees. I think the gap is close enough to the box. We won't see any over the top shenanigans, but with Thomas Gilbert on the card, I may have spoke too soon. This back nine, if I'm remembering correctly, does start to tighten up. We do see some more tunnels and some more elevation play. So it should be an exciting one. Stu with the box after his eagle on hole nine, being the gap pretty well. It's a late tree there. Late tree, but maybe circle's edge. See what Thomas does. It's looking pretty good as well. Yeah. It's a nice ground play. He's past the basket. He makes it nice and clean through there. Casey Hannemeyer. Yeah. Looking like he's going over the top. Going with that thumber. Casey throwing his H1. He does throw a 300 plus foot thumber. That's not the thumber he wanted, but. A little shorter than he wanted for sure. It is safe in the fairway with a, not a lot of drama. Andrew. This is looking nice and smooth. That might be my favorite thrown shot of the group coming down. A little down. short as well, though, but... You have to anticipate some ground play. Maybe he didn't get what he expected there. Stewart from the Sage. Yeah, a good Just bid misses. from Stu with the obstruction. Casey's 40-footer. Cans it. That is a nice looking scorecard right there. We'll see a replay of that one. Just nice and smooth, straight into the basket. Yep, smooth, clean, compact, no jumping, no extra body movements. That is a, a veteran putter's putt. Andrew now from 29. Oh, he hits Gage. He's got that little bit of a floaty putt, and uh, it's, uh, you know, your your miss is going to be up and down. It's not going to be so much left and right. He just missed that one a little bit short. Thomas making good on his drive. That's the birdie. Looks like Andrew and Stu here will clean up their pars. And we'll be on to hole 11. Hole 11 is a 528 foot par four. This one plays very up, very, very much uphill. It's harder to see that from this drone shot as we started high, but as you can see, this one is a challenging uphill shot. You need the distance, as much distance as you can off the tee. There's lots of trees in the center of this fairway. Thomas Gilbert going high, Iser. That's good. Swing, get that. And yep. just <laughs> laces it into the middle of the fairway. Center of the f- fairway with the spike hyzer. Casey probably looking to do something similar. A little bit flatter shot, maybe to bite off a bit more. Catching the edge of the fairway here. This must be playing as one of the harder holes on the course. Uh, at 528 feet uphill, probably playing closer to what, 650. And a lot of trees to navigate. Let's see what Stu does here. He's he's in the fairway. A little shorter than the other guys, but he'll like that. 
Andrews is looking similar. Two shorties and two big fellas. <laughs> Just like Stu said, two short ones and two big ones. Andrew going to his sidearm. Getting that big flex, hopefully coming back. Nice. Yes, it this is. Looks real nice. Maybe a circle's edge look as you see the basket on the right side there. Stu from a similar distance goes oh, yeah. high hyzer. Just the truth, he does. Wow. That looks really good as well. Casey going for a high sidearm flex shot by the looks of it. This is not a tomahawk. Yeah, he had those trees in front of him to compete with and probably not the shot he was looking for there. Yeah, I believe that's an H1, a very overstable disc. Probably looking for that to come out and work back to the right. Just give it a bit too much angle. <coughs> Thomas work, with the uh, forehand spike, Kaiser. Looks like he's wide to the left a little bit. Might give him just outside the circle look there. Casey with the long yeah. jumper. Oh, and he makes oh, that one. Oh, wow. That might be shot of the tournament so far. That looked great. And by might, I Let's say take another is. look at this. Didn't even need the chains. He hit the back of the basket, and that's in. Unreal from Casey. Oh, Andrew looking to have some magic of his own, just missing short left. Thomas with the obstruction. Yeah, you can see Circle's Edge there, so it's a little bit tough with that sagebrush in front of it. Stu making that putt look easy from Circle's Edge. That was a great upshot to get to that spot. Nice open putt for the birdie. Largely avoiding danger, our card was. Uh, Casey getting in the most of it, but making good on his long putt. You can hear the gentleman on this hole, hole 12, 377 foot par three. As you can see, a little challenging off the start here. Hard to get the drone to get through all those trees, but it opens up a little bit. This is downhill. It's almost the exact opposite as hole 11 with a guarded green. Yeah, I expect to see some spike hyzers and things. Uh... Or, wow, Casey looking like he's trying to play the flex shot straight up the gap. Oh, and I may have spoken too soon. It looks like they have added a Mando on the left side to the tournament. So his over-the-top sidearm play is not there. Unless he throws it over the top with the flex shot, which he has. This was actually one of the funnier holes to be at the tee box for. Because every single one of these guys, they were talking about this shot. And every single one of them was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, I mean, That's what I was about. making the fairway as big as possible is typically the best play. And going over these trees makes the fairway very big, even if the course is trying to stop you at every turn from doing that. And you can see Stu's disc across the other fairway and hitting a tree. Here's yeah, Thomas to see if he one. can execute it. Did it come out quick? Yeah. Looks it's like it's... Oh, oh there it is. Oh, yeah. Lance. Yeah. Probably, probably outside of the circle, but he's in the fairway. Andrew going to play the gap as intended. This should be exciting. That is not an easy gap to hit. Oh, and he hits oh. early tree. Oh, oh, but it looks like he's getting some distance. Down the fairway, it looks like. That's like best. He does bite off a little bit of distance. He's out in the open here. He has a tricky forehand, though. Not sure where that one all landed. We'll see when we get to his disc. Casey throwing the hyzer over top of the trees. Looks like he'll be inside of the circle. Well played shot there. And Stu. From the other fairway. Can he recover? Go, go, go. He's a nice window there. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Yeah, smoothing out a little spinner there. Thomas's drive. Yeah, Thomas's drive, the only birdie opportunity of the group. Oh, oh. Thomas so catching close. both some tree and some chain. Andrew shot not too bad, actually. 
Oh, but he hits that low cage again. Casey Hannemeyer for his par. He makes good on that one. Stuart will clean up his par. Thomas will get his. And Andrew drops in his bogey. Moving on to hole 13. But before that, we have our 312 scoreboard. Not much has changed at the top. In fact, it's mostly the same for our lead card. But Miguel Alvarado makes a climb into that chase card. Big shout out to Okadong Disc Supply. Definitely worth the check out. Located in Kamloops, BC or online. Hole 13 is a 326 foot par three. Lots of trees as seems to be the theme on the back nine so far. This one can get tricky if you miss your shot to the left but the basket is tucked just to the right here. So these guys should make work of this one. Trees look like they're high enough on the left that they can't necessarily play over the top. And as nice Casey target. does Sometimes just that. Casey does. Oh, but he does hit the tree. That. I suspect we'll see a group of sidearms and maybe a backhand turnover from Andrew. This is Stewart. It's like he has got over on him a little bit. Yeah, those are those dangerous trees on the left. Saving a kick back to the fairway. That is trouble for Stu. Thomas looking at the spike Kaiser over the top. Oh, I, lost I mean, when you can throw as far as this guy, why not try, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I remember, right? That is a special run of D3 from Bowling Green that is extremely overstable from Thomas. Oh, no. Oh, that's actually not yeah, too bad. Yeah, Andrew's looking a bit overturned, but comes back nicely, putting him maybe to 25 feet. Stu scrambling from the knee. Thomas for the birdie. And you know he's good for that one. That's a great putt from Thomas. Let's see if Casey can follow suit. Oh no. This is chains, right? Good effort from a knee like that, but not what he was looking for. Andrew Henderson makes good on his birdie opportunity. And Stu to save par from 20. Oh. That's catches, heartbreaking. Catches a piece of the cage and will have a similar putt now for bogey. Stu putting on a pretty good charge uh, to get onto this lead card, wanting to stay there, not looking card this bogey, but does and stops the bleeding at a plus one for the hole. Still looking good, a nag five on the round. That's not the worst. Casey Hannemeyer, nice clean scorecard there. Hole 14 is a 370 foot par three. This one plays slightly downhill, but it is open most of the way, except the bottlenecks towards the end here into this tighter green with trees to compete with. And of course the sagebrush that seems to be everywhere on this course. Likely to see players play over the top in one way or another, again, to minimize the amount of trees they have to contend with here. Thomas going, going wide, wide, wide over wide. the top. Looks like he's throwing off the side of the tee pad instead of in the direction of the hole and leaves it at circle's edge. Here's Andrew. More traditional play. That's great. 
And that looks pretty good as well. Beats Thomas there by oh, a and gets couple a nice feet. Roll. More than a couple feet with the roll. Casey likely to do the same thing. H1 from him, very overstable. Yeah, throwing it flat, letting the disc do the work here. Not sure where that one ended up. I like that. It's got a forward push. Yeah, I think it's got to that tree. Get around that tree. Sure, looks good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Great shot from Stu. Best drive of the group so far. Yeah, here's Casey's. Looked a little bit off. Kind of a half bit, it looked like. Thomas from just outside of the circle. Oh, oh. Almost did what Hits the band. Usually he's good for those ones. Anderson. Oh, oh. Andrew splashing out right. Maybe something to do with the obstruction of that sagebrush in front of him. I know it wasn't very high, but when it's in your hands like that, it is very difficult to putt. Yeah, Stu with the grin on his face as he cards his two. Like he said, he takes a shot on the card as these everyone else will take their pars. Depending on what Casey does here. He, he sinks that one. And Andrew and Thomas will... Finish out their pars. Hole 15, 351 foot, par three. So I'm plays uphill, lots of sage, lots of trees. As you see the drone come through here. Yeah, lots of sage obstructing more than just the throw here. If you kick early off one of these trees, it will really hinder the run up and any other movement you may need to throw the shot these guys likely to play over the top again to stop any chance of that while i eat my words and Stu throws right at it unfortunately catching a tree midway through the fairway yeah that sage That's right so at the cheap. green is really uh the, 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 those are the ones that make it tough to land yeah. for your landing Woo! zone. Oh, look at this one from Thomas. Yeah, it circles edge deep. Making the crowd move. Casey. Going with the forehand. Ooh, leaves it at the basket fading wide. That is not what Casey wanted from that one. Andrew looking like he's going to go straight at it as well. Let's see if he can correct on what Stuart missed. Sneak. Asking for the sneak, but he doesn't get it. Catches the same tree. Stu from 100. Putting a half chance on it with a throw. Andrew trying to do the same with a jump putt from similar distance. Can't quite get it there. And this is Casey's from uh, the trees. You couldn't even see where he was, but puts it nicely up into circle one. Tom is making good on his drive. Getting the birdie. Puts him to nine card. down for the round, matching Casey now, I believe. Andrew Henderson looking for his par. Good to get that one. That distance in a little further, giving him some trouble over the two days so far with some cage hits. Stu taking his par as well. As will Casey. Through 15, let's take a look at our scoreboard here. Thomas and Casey both at nine down on the round. Of course, Thomas has that seven stroke lead. Stu and Andrew tied at neg nine. That one's gonna be interesting to watch for the rest of this round and possibly into tomorrow. Yeah, and also to note, looks like Miguel bogeyed his, his way down into a tie with Schultz once again. Hole 16, this one 
one of the longer shots on this course, even though it's, it plays as 575, but it's downhill and there's dangerous OB on the left-hand side here. That hill drops off quick. That's the scary part because most of these guys are gonna go with the backhand and it will end up in that area with a lot of danger. You wanna land right where those trees we just passed for your easy approach into this open green, but be aware of that hillside again on the left. Yes, the trees on the right on the way in will be the biggest danger. These guys likely to go over. Oh, Tom is going wider. Not a ton of height, but more than good enough. Oh, looks like he had a tree or something there, but he's past those trees mm -hmm. in that the open area. Put him in the clear for an easy approach. Stu likely looking to do the same. Oh, come on, stay on it, Ooh. stay on it. So Not quite as wide. Yeah. Nice throw. So he'll stay in bounds though. That's a good shot. Oh. Right, boy, Casey. Casey here gets some behind this. Go, go. Oh. This one's gonna land. Oh, it looks like you hit those trees. Catching some tree, maybe a good tree. Oh. Moving left towards that OB. Andrew definitely in trouble with that OB now. Needs to dig if it hits the ground. And looks like it doesn't. Goes with the OB. Taking his meter off the line. Looks like the tree saved him from having a long day of fishing for that disc, but OB nonetheless throwing a great approach here. Wow. What a great approach. Good recovery shot from Andrew. Casey with the open approach, but throwing at the OB. So that distortion, I believe, again. Yep. Puts it under the basket. Stewart. Been a little bit long, but should be an easy putt for him. Thomas looks like he's lining up a jump putt here. Don't think that was a genuine effort for the basket, but a great way to have a soft approach to mitigate any skip towards that hill. Is he quickly dropping in his birdie? Let's see if Stu can card his as well. Gets away with one there, I think. Stu, I believe, putting with invaders, which is a bit different for your Innova guys, but uh, kind of cool to see that just getting some love. Thomas will drop in his birdie as well. Hole 17, 638 foot par four. Not as much danger on the OB side of things, just put it out into this open field. It gets a little bit tougher here as it bottlenecks into these trees. This big one on the right hand side, if you can land to the left of that, you'll have an easy approach into the green. As you can see here, it gets a little tight. But those guys should be looking for a good, good drive off the tee and a nice easy approach. Yeah, I suspect these guys will try and take as much off the tee as possible here. As long as you get out of that initial gap, you're essentially throwing into a field, maybe looking for some placement in that field, left or right side, where they like to attack the green from. Thomas moving out to the left, which should set him up for a hyzer, a stock hyzer in. He gets behind that one. That one's a long throw. We're not quite getting as much as Thomas. He'll land in that sage brush there, but in good position. Casey taking the sidearm, which like we said, Thomas going hyzer, hyzer for comfort. Casey known for his sidearm, maybe sidearm, sidearm, but that's left enough that he will be throwing from a similar position to Thomas. Yep, yep. just missed the tip of that tree. Yep. <laughs> As you heard those guys say, going. Andrew just missed the tip of the tree and he gets out into that fairway as well. He'll be up here. So that was a little bit of distance, but look at this wow. shot. That's a nice shot. Looks like a 350 plus throw for 
Andrew, but you wouldn't know it was any more than 200 feet with how well he put it towards the pin. Stu forced to navigate this sagebrush with the sidearm flex on, which doesn't necessarily pan out the way he wanted it to. Casey, a little wide right there. Yeah, not getting the hyzer part of the hyzer. Let's see what Tom's can do with this mash of a drive. Nice it's a good correction over Casey's play, throwing what looks like a distortion. Stewart with an awkward stance. It's a nice ground play. Way to, way to work the ground on that skip. Yeah, sometimes you got to get creative, and Stu does with a great approach. Casey with a tough straddle putt here. He knew, he knew it out of his hand. Disappointed out of his hand. Didn't really give it much a chance, but shouldn't offer much of a comebacker. Andrew makes good on that one. Yeah, after a great approach, good to see that one get a birdie. Thomas gets his birdie after that big drive and nice approach. And Stu puts in his par. Cleans up his par after two tough lies. That first one with the flex shot and that second one under the trees. No easy task, either of them. Casey puts in his par as well. That brings us to hole 18. Using the alternate tee position. It's a 301 foot par three, but there is a bit of OB danger as you see this cut the cut lawn is in bounds to the left where it's uncut is out of bounds and to the right of this path here there is also out of bounds so this one is a tricky landing spot near the basket could be a bit of a scary one for andrew mostly leaning on his back hands which will fade towards that ob go in go in do it do it oh that was a nice <laughs> nice run by thomas Andrew goes with the backhand. Looks like he's navigated this one well. Oh, and he has. What a great shot by Andrew. Yeah, he was in danger of going OB to the right there as you saw that stake, but he navigated that well. No. Oh, and looks like that's got a dig. Hit a branch. But he stays in bounds. Casey, again, leaning on that A3 of his that he likes so well. Go, 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 go. This one's looking good, too. A little short in the sagebrush. Here's Stu's. A tough playing around that tree. Oh, oh. gives it a great run off the cage. Enough height to get that lateral movement with the putter to come back towards the basket. Casey obstructed here by the sage. Oh, and another Causing splash issues. off the chain. Casey lucky to be five foot seventeen <laughs> and to be able to reach over those sages. Uh, Thomas, a tall guy as well, able to do so, but shorter players definitely struggle with the sage more. Sage, known for smelling good, but maybe not for putting good. Yeah, smells good, gives you stinky putts. Andrew Henderson gets his bar. Birdie? Birdie. Birdie. Casey tapping in his bar. And so will Stu here. Stu getting cozy with some foliage. And that is the conclusion of round two at Rose Hill. So a lot of birdies on the board today. Yeah, you can definitely see these guys capitalizing on the better weather on a course that has less OB danger, but probably a more technical course overall. These guys are using their power to go over the top on many of the more difficult holes, uh, technicality wise, and, and doing so 
very well. Thomas able to edge out Casey at the end of the round there. Casey with the Scorcher front nine and Thomas with the battle back at the end. The entire group carding very few bogeys, lots of green from everybody. Yeah, and obviously uh, Stuart and Andrew are, uh, you know, neck and neck there uh, in third and fourth. And yeah, that's a great golf had by all. Um, it's interesting because uh, this is Rose Hill is known more, more so to be the windy course of the two courses and kind of uh, flipped it on its head there. This one being a little bit uh, of a more birdie fest. Yeah, I think the AM players may have been playing at Rose Hill in the wind while the pros were on MacArthur Island. Shout out to all the AM players that navigated the wind up here. You can see it's on top of the hill, very exposed, no wind breaks to be had. And that'll do it for round two of the Tournament Capital Open coverage. Stay tuned for round three. I'm Andre. And I'm Jesse, and this has been round two of the Tournament Capital Open. See you in round three.